Obviously, that we all know what the topic's about today. It's about making the transition. And our next speaker, it would take me about 15 minutes to read his qualifications. Um, so I'll just summarise it to say that he started in 1994. He has a degree with honours in engineering. He has an electrical and electronics uh, degree. He's a PhD in digital motion control from the Royal Institute of Technology in Sweden. For uh, nine years after that, senior lecturer in the Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering. He currently is the lecture, lecturer in electronic engineering in the School of Engineering and Technology in Central Queensland University at the Gladstone campus. His research interests are digital control, estimation and identification, non-linear control, electronic, electrical machines and drives, instrumentation, automation and hybrid electric system. If ever there was a question and answer system that we needed someone to answer, I'm sure this man can. Please welcome Dr. Sanath Alak Hakun. Do you want the roving doctor or at the podium? I will be in the podium because okay. I had to run a video and so Okay, on, so. no worries. All right. Happy? Um, you okay with that one? Sorry, uh, thanks for the uh, introduction and then... Uh, it's you. You got it? You know, okay, close show. Yeah. By the way, our eyesight's the right thing. Yeah, so See. Oh, okay. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks a lot. Um, uh, first, uh, let me uh, pay my gratitude to the elders of the uh, past, present, and future, and I ac acknowledge the traditional owners of the land we gather today. Um, and also, I must thank uh, Australian Electric Vehicle Association for the invitation to come here and, and present. Uh, what I'm going to present uh, today is, uh, is some initiatives that we, we want to uh, push forward based on some of the uh, little experience we have in, in terms of uh, electric vehicles. Uh, So we, actually we are, I'm, I work from the, uh, uh, yeah, all right, thanks. So I work from the uh, Gladstone campus of Central Queensland University, but uh, we call ourselves the uh, largest, Australia's largest uh, regional university. We got 27 sites in all over Australia. We got one campus in here in Sydney also, but uh, except uh, except Tasmania and Northern Territory and Canberra, we have uh, CQ University sites. But we don't teach engineering, for example, in all the sites. But we have our presence all over Australia. Uh, when it comes to uh, engaging and research and the research engagement. We are an engaged university with our community, so we are, are a regional university, so we would like to be able to uh, engage with our communities when it comes to our research also. So uh, what we are going to talk about basically is uh, how, how are we trying to uh, reduce emission and also promote uh, electric vehicles and low, low carbon emission transportation through our activities. Now, most of the things that we try to do today uh, were inspired by some of the initiatives that some of our own uh, engineering students took. Now, one of them is this high-performance electric cart application. I saw one of one similar on, on this side, left side of the uh, exhibition hall, a converted uh, e-go e cart. So, what uh, Mark did was uh, converting his own, I mean, we have this uh, finally undergraduate thesis project. So for his his thesis project, he wanted to convert his own uh, electric go-kart, uh, sorry, his own uh, IC engine driven go-kart to an electric go-kart. So uh, with me being electrical machines person who taught electrical machines for him, he approached me and then we worked together in, in that project. So mainly what he wanted to do was to to uh, 
remove this IC engine from the go-kart and then replace it with the motor drive system having similar performance as the as a typical racing go-kart would have. Uh, so then he, he, he chose this uh, drive architecture because of the, this happened a couple of years back and then uh, these are the best components that he could uh, think of using a uh, brushed DC motor with the DC motor drive and then uh, a chain drive coupling the motor and the rear axle uh, and the throttle to control the, uh, the, the voltage input with the lithium ion battery battery pack. So uh, some of the specs that he was uh, targeting at performance objectives he wanted to achieve 75 to 80 uh, kilometers per hour speed and then uh, acceleration time of like 2.7 to 4 uh, meters per second squared and then his targeted range was about 10 kilometers minimum 10 kilometers because that's what a racing go-kart would require to, to to meet and then his drive parameters he had to go for like 70 to 48 to 72 volts dc system voltage and then the system would operate as a battery electric uh, vehicle uh, and, and so on and then he, he, he found uh, I mean we didn't design and manufacture any of the drive components we just uh, selected off the shelf products and put them together just a assemb assembled system and then um, lithium ion with a, the, his energy storage was a lithium ion with a battery management system uh, so these are the just the uh, components and then uh, <coughs> I'll show you a quick video where he explains his song. Sorry, I didn't get it right. <laughs>
That's it. So uh, I wouldn't repeat all those things that he said. So these are this is what he could achieve, uh, and then uh, now his work inspired uh, some of the other students. Now, like uh, here in the other student, what he did was he had his own Toyota Avalon. It's a big car, but then uh, he wanted to convert uh, that car into an, an electric vehicle. It's a conversion again, but with uh, then the the architecture that he wanted to do is without without disturbing his IC engine driven system. He, he just wanted to preserve that. So what we did there was uh, we it's a it's a front wheel driven car. So we didn't touch up or touch any any of the front wheel driven IC engine. Uh, that system was not disturbed at all. So he picked uh, he we found uh, hub motors brushless DC hub motors. So he he replaced his rear wheels with the with the hub motors, and a suitable drive system. So that was the architecture, which is more like a parallel hybrid sort of a architecture that he worked on. Uh, so in that one, so this shows some of the uh, uh, just some details about the bench test and the. Uh, uh, Test that we did on a torque measurement and so on. The next slide uh, shows you what he did was. Uh, I mean, he couldn't. He couldn't uh, uh, go all the way up to getting the road worthy. So we couldn't. We couldn't run the system, run the car on, on road. But uh, his dad got a farmland, so he was just driving uh, in in that area, uh, just for testing, and then. Uh, just for a comparison, what he did was on this slide, the next slide. Now, what is what is active now shows uh, without the hub motors operating, uh, how much RPM you need to get up to 40 kilometers per hour. But in the next one, what he did was he just uh, pressed the accelerator plus the throttle, and 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 uh, he was able to demonstrate that it didn't consume that much of uh, IC engine power for him to be able to come up to, to 40 kilometers per hour speed. So it was just some kind of rough test that he could do uh, just to be able to prove that his system was working. And then uh, this one, <laughs> this one is the, So one another challenge he had was uh, the wheels were popping out, so uh, that could have been an issue when he if he tried to get the road worthy for that. But this shows the the process of uh, measuring the the torque produced by the only by the electric hub motors. Uh, so he took some measurements and then uh, he he could prove his system was uh, successful. So with all this experience, uh, wait a minute, this will finish soon. <clears throat> so what we want to do is uh, get integrate all this experience into uh, uh, stand some kind of developing a, a, a marketable uh, product that can be used by the regional communities. Because what I believe in is, I'll, I'll come to that slide very soon. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, what we have been listening to some very good, excellent presentations since morning. But even with the last presentation, what we could see is that, I mean, the infrastructure, charging infrastructure, and so on, they will, they will come up very soon in the city. Like in Sydney, in a couple of years' time, I can see. The only issue that 
a particular individual will have to consider when buying an electric vehicle is whether he or she can afford it other than that all the infrastructure will be ready very soon but would that be the case in the regional regional australia and then plus investing money on a brand new car is that the most higher higher priority thing for a I extended in what should I do? I'm going to click on it. This one is it. This one is it. Yes. AP. So, the, the, the architecture that we used for the uh, for higher ends project, the parallel architecture. So we want to develop this architecture and come up with a solution where for, I mean, this is not for brand new or, or new design and manufacture from scratch, but for existing IC engine driven cars, particularly for front wheel driven, whether we could come for a, come up with a proper standard product which can do the conversion, e-conversion, so that it will give these features. One is within city driving, it should be possible to go 100% electric for like speeds like less than 60 kilometers or something within the city, which will reduce the emissions significantly. And then you also have the transition is one challenge probably we have to address because your IC engine is still there, but whenever you want to, whether you could have the real hybrid sort of behavior by transforming the drive from the, from the uh, hub motors to the IC engine and vice versa. Regeneration is probably not a very big problem, but still, then again, you need to address things like uh, ABS and all sorts of other safety issues, braking, how can we handle those problems in a system like this, with, with part of that is fitted, retrofitted. And then in the worst case, if your battery system is down, you go 100% on IC engine, so you still can go home. So this probably is the best solution for a regional uh, car owner until the charging infrastructure is ready. And in the way I believe in it, uh, this kind of solution will not only uh, with, will not only serve Australia. I mean, Australia will will probably go for 100% electric in I don't know how many years time. But even if we do that. There will be a lot of other countries who will still be using these old IC engine driven cars. So for a product like this, there is a very big market for a very long time. So that is what we try to achieve. I mean, some of the slides following just talk about the same thing. So I will just uh, skip these ones. But what we are looking for is some partners who believe in this and then uh, who would like to partner with us so that we could uh, do this. This is definitely not a not a brand new like new invention, but this serves a lot of regional communities in the long run. So that's that's basically it. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Doctor. Fantastic. <laughs> Good to see regional stuff happening. Do we have some questions? Bring the microphone up for you, sir. Yeah, I'm a little bit unclear just exactly how far have you gone with this concept? Have you selected components or where's it at? Well, apart from uh, Hayden's uh, project, 
we haven't gone beyond that point. But see, the biggest challenge with our style of student undergraduate projects is that the, it dies as the student graduates. But what I want to see happening is we, we got the experience. We know where to look at how to go about. But then we need like someone sitting with the project for, let's say, one to two years to develop the project. That cannot happen with the undergraduate. So what I'm looking for is funding and some industry partners so that we could employ a, a dedicated uh, postdoc or someone, whoever you call it, research engineer or whatever you call it, come up with the product, test it, and then he, now Hayden couldn't address certain things like, I mean, he just used uh, some whole bunch of lead acid batteries because of the cost. We, even university, couldn't help him. He, he just uh, out of pocket sourced uh, some money and then built it. But uh, if you go for lithium ion, it will be a bit more expensive. But then you will save a lot of boot space in a in an old car, existing car. So um, so those things put those things together with lead acid. He couldn't go and get the roadworthy because uh, it's not safe with the way they, he assembled it. But with proper lithium ion batteries and so on, if you address few more things, roadworthy can be obtained. And then it is a product. And then what I want to see happening is, I mean, you, if you study a lot of different uh, engine models and different car models and so on, the ideal situation is if you can go on eBay and then click, 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 this is my car, this is the model, this is the engine capacity. So then the right products, right battery size, right, right hub motors, right drive, you just assemble the package and send it off. It should be that kind of a thing in the long run. So it can be achieved, but few more things to be developed, like uh, there has to be some way of transferring the control, drive control between the IC engine and the motor drive system, which Hayden couldn't do. So someone has to put some time on it and study all the safety standards and things like that. So we need a bit of manpower dedicated on it. So that is where it stands at the moment. <coughs> Fantastic. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks very much. <laughs> Big hand, ladies and gentlemen. Good luck with the project. The next manufacturing. Yeah, we look forward to it. Yeah, we do too. <coughs> Especially when it's safe.